Unit 1. Activity 1. Listen to the recording and tick the correct pictures. 1. She has really developed her craft. 2. The local kids hang out at the mall. 3. My brother is a real DIY enthusiast. 4. I'm relaxing in the bath. 5. Lisa and her friend spent a couple of hours window shopping. Activity 2. Listen to the recording and decide whether the sentences are true or false. I have three friends. Henry is 11 years old. On weekdays, he usually hangs out with his friends after school. Every Friday afternoon, he attends the cooking club. He loves cooking and he can make lots of delicious dishes. His ambition is to become an internationally recognized cook. Thomas is 14 years old. As soon as school finishes, he often goes home immediately. His cousin, who studies in the same school, usually comes over on Wednesday evenings and they play chess with each other. Unlike Thomas, he is very good at this game. Daisy is 15 years old. She loves painting. She attends the art club at her school every Monday and Friday. Her teacher often encourages her to paint her way. She isn't charged for joining the club, but she pays $10 per month to buy necessary stuff. That's pretty cheap. She would like to become an artist to inspire people's creativity. Activity 3. Listen to the recording and fill in the blanks. A recent survey conducted by TIRA, a Vietnamese research company, highlights problems about the lifestyles of Vietnamese teenagers in urban areas. There is an imbalance in their consumption of time for studying and recreational activities. On average, these teenagers spend nine and a half hours a day on studies at school and at home. They only have about four hours for entertainment. Most of this time is spent on watching television and the internet, where they chat through social networks. The teenagers admit that they use computers to play games and to chat with friends much more than using it for studying purposes. The survey also shows that during the summer months, despite having much more free time than during school years, these teenagers still fail to manage their time properly. They stay in bed longer and then get hooked on games and TV. The time for computers and TV increases significantly to about five or six hours a day while there is almost no time for physical outdoor activities. Activity 4. Listen to the recording and choose the correct answer. My name is Ben. If you were to ask me what my favorite sport is, my answer would be swimming. I started learning how to swim when I was five years old and I have been swimming ever since. There are many reasons why I love swimming, but I'll just share a few with you and maybe I can even encourage you to go for a swim. The first reason that I love swimming is that it can be extremely relaxing. I love the feeling of floating on the water and feeling almost weightless. I find that whenever I leave the pool, I feel totally relaxed. Another reason that I love swimming is that it has more variety than other sports. Swimming offers many different strokes, so it doesn't feel like you're stuck doing the same thing over and over again. In the summer, swimming provides a nice, refreshing break 
there's nothing better than jumping into the water on a hot, sweltering summer's day. The pool makes you feel instantly better. And I think it adds to the summer holiday feeling. As for me, the summer months are when I swim the most. It is a sport which can be done all over the world in many beautiful locations. You can choose to swim in a swimming pool or to go splash in the sea. And finally, it's a life skill which everyone should have. Not only is it good for your health, but you never know when you'll need the ability to swim. Unit 2. Activity 1. Listen to the recording and tick the correct pictures. 1. Ming wants to fly his new kite. 2. That is a bale of hay. 3. Farmers are extremely busy during the harvest. 4. He took a trip to the highlands. 5. We pitched our tent on the grassland. Activity 2. Listen to the recording and match column A with column B to make correct sentences. In the past few decades, the countryside has experienced lots of changes. Because of population growth, more products are needed. Therefore, more factories have been constructed and young people have more choices of jobs apart from becoming farmers. When big cities have become more and more polluted, the fresher atmosphere in the countryside attracts more people. Rich people who live in the city for their work often buy a second home in the countryside to spend their weekend and holiday. As a result, the countryside is no longer a small community of rural people. In fact, in many parts of the countryside, there are urban people from nearby cities. Additionally, the introduction of the Internet creates more opportunities for increasing rural people's knowledge. Many farmers have used machines for tasks that used to be done by hand, which helps them save labor. In the near future, it is expected that the countryside will gradually become more similar to big cities. Activity 3 Listen to the recording and fill in the blanks. A new survey has found that British people who live in the countryside are more optimistic than those who live in big cities. According to the survey, between January and September 2013, the satisfaction ratings of people living in the countryside leaped from 20.5 to 30.8 percent an increase of more than 10% compared to the previous year. These rural people all shared that the cost of living, medical service and education have improved significantly. As a result, they feel less pressure and enjoy life more. At the same time, people living in big cities were worried and their confidence about jobs and the economy fell 3.9%. The quality of life obtained from interviews, was reported to be three times higher in the countryside than that in the city. Nevertheless, young people still prefer big cities because of higher job demand, higher salary, and more interesting life. Activity 4. Listen to the recording and match each of the following sentences with the correct box, true or false. I'm Linda. I lived in a small village in Texas when I was a little girl. We lived on a farm with lots of animals. It was very relaxing and quiet. You could hear the birds singing in the morning. It was great during the week because I was with my friends at school and we had lots of after-school activities. But there wasn't much to do at the weekend when I was at home. My school friends and I couldn't meet because there were no buses. So basically, I had to watch TV. It was so boring. Now that I'm older, 
My parents moved to New York City. New York stands out among the U.S. cities that use public transportation the most. Most of these vehicles operate 24 hours a day. It's easier now to be with my friends because I can take the bus or the underground to everywhere I want to go. My favorite place is the shopping center. I always hang out with my friends there. Unit 3 Activity 1 Listen to the recording and tick the correct pictures. 1. They are already planning their costumes for Halloween. 2. He rears poultry in the garden. 3. More than 10 people attended the ceremony. 4. The dancer was wearing a traditional costume. 5. The water wheel is used to get water to the fields. Activity 2. Listen to the recording. Circle A, B or C to answer each question. Hey Jack, how long have you been living in this Vietnamese village? For two years. I come from the USA. What do you like about this place? I love the mountains, the lakes and the rivers. This is a very beautiful village. It is not as polluted as the city where I used to live in the USA. What about the people here? They are very friendly. I have made more friends than I expected. Is there anything that you don't like? The weather is much hotter here compared to the USA, especially in the summer. I feel uncomfortable and tired. What is the most unusual thing that you have experienced? I had no idea that there were so many snakes here. Once a snake slithered into my house, I was extremely scared. Activity 3. Listen to the recording and correct the mistake in each of the following sentences. The cultural space of the gongs in the central highlands of Vietnam covers several provinces and 17 Austro-Asian and Austronesian ethno-linguistic communities. Closely linked to daily life and the cycle of the seasons, their belief systems form a mystical world where the gongs produce a privileged language between men, divinities, and the supernatural world. Behind every gong hides a god or a goddess who is all the more powerful when the gong is older. Every family possesses at least one gong which indicates the family's wealth, authority, and prestige, and also ensures its protection. While a range of brass instruments is used in the various ceremonies. The gong alone is present in all the rituals of community life and is the main ceremonial instrument. The manner in which the gongs of Vietnam are played varies according to the village. Each instrumentalist carries a different gong measuring between 25 and 80 centimeters in diameter. From 3 to 12 gongs are played by the village ensembles, which are made up of men or women. Different arrangements and rhythms are adapted to the context of the ceremony. For example, the ritual sacrifice of the bollocks, the blessings of the rice or morning rites. The gongs of this region are bought in neighboring countries and then tuned to the desired tone for their own use. Activity 4. Listen to the recording and fill in the blanks. Te Minority You can visit the Te Minority in Ban Ho and Thang Phu village. The Tays are the earliest known minority in Vietnam, who are thought to have arrived from inland Southeast Asia in about 500 BC. They settled in the valleys in the northwest part of Sapa. 
The Tay language belongs to the Tay Thai language group. Their alphabet is based on the Latin alphabet devised in 1960, similar to the Viet alphabet. The Tays worship ancestors, the house spirit, kitchen spirit, and the midwife. The traditional dress is made from indigo dyed cotton. It is usually plain with little embroidery or other decoration. The women wear a simple shirt and silver buttons down the front teamed with black trousers. Both sexes wear colorful headscarves. Nowadays, the Tays are often seen wearing Viet and Western clothes. The Tay social system used to resemble a feudal society. One man in each village owned the land, forest and rivers. He ruled over the people living on that land. This regime appeared very early and ended in the 19th century. Tays now live in villages of mixed ethnic groups, enter into mixed marriages and leave their traditional settlements to work in other areas. They have adopted different elements of the Qing culture and of the Thai-speaking people and are considered the most integrated into mainstream Vietnamese culture. Unit 4. Activity 1. Listen to the recording and tick the correct pictures. 1. Put the cutlery on the table. 2. Wipe your feet on the mat before you come in, please. 3. She gave the waiter a generous tip. 4. Tom's sister came over on Saturday with all her offspring. 5. An old woman was reading palms. Activity 2. Listen to the recording and match column A with column B to make correct sentences. Traditional music in Vietnam has always been a convergence of art music and folk characteristics. As the Vietnamese art music was linked to the king's court, it surely had to pass away. But the folkloristic element is still alive. For the one who is traveling with open ears and open eyes, he will always experience a tradition in culture, dance, and music which is indigenous, rich, and unique. One interesting fact is that most of the traditional music of Vietnam is no solo music. Solo pieces may be found for Chang and Bao, but these are not so old. So these pieces rather belong to contemporary music. Most instruments belong to an ensemble, and even instrumental music is rare, as traditional Vietnamese music is centered around the human voice and singing. Ensembles appear in many sizes starting from one instrument to accompany a singer, up to 50 or more for a theatre play. Nearly all instruments are still made by hand. Only a few, mainly the tourist versions, get produced in factories. The manufactured ones are of course better in quality and sound, and many of them get ornamented with carvings or inlays. It is a task for the Vietnamese people to keep their traditions alive and to think about ways to motivate young people in order to learn how to love this music again. Activity 3. Listen to the recording and decide whether the sentences are true or false. Li Si is an important part in Vietnam's customs of Tet festivals, especially with children. It is a small amount of money that can bring good fortune to the upcoming year. However, Lisi is not limited only to the first day, but can even last to the ninth or tenth day of Tet Festival and be given when the adults first meet the kids. Besides the money, the tiny red envelope also has its own meaning. It represents the secrecy and privacy to avoid comparison 
as adults want children to regard the money as the gift of New Year, instead of being jealous of receiving less than other kids. The red colour, the most popular colour appearing in Vietnamese festivals, signifies the prosperity and great luck according to Asian beliefs. In the morning of the first day of Lunar New Year, children and parents will visit grandparents' homes, wishing for a happy new year and great health, showing respect and gratitude, and giving gifts. After that, it is grandparents' and adults' turn to give children lucky money to welcome their new age. Activity 4 Listen to the recording and circle A, B, or C to answer each question. The Tay live mainly in the northeastern part of Vietnam. They live in large and crowded villages with hundreds of houses. They live in houses built on stilts. They are mainly farmers and they grow rice on terraced fields. They also raise cattle and poultry. Tay traditional dress is made from homegrown cotton. There is usually not much embroidery or other decorations. Women wear skirts or trousers, with short shirts inside and long ones on the outside. They have many festivals and holidays in a year. The Lunar New Year and the Mid-July festivals are the most lavishly organized. During festivals, people in many places play con throwing, badminton, tug of war, dragon dancing, or chess. The Tay eat mainly sticky rice. On festival occasions, they make many kinds of cakes, such as bang chung, sticky rice square cakes, bang day, sticky rice round cakes, or bang khao, cakes made of white rice flour. Unit 5, Activity 1. Listen to the recording and tick the correct pictures. 1. We went through an archway into the courtyard. 2. She will appear in court tomorrow. 3. He dressed himself up as an emperor. 4. Incense burned in the corner of the room. 5. She carried a lantern to light her way. Activity 2. Listen to the recording and fill in the blanks. The meaning of Mid-Autumn Day is rather different from that in China, though the Vietnamese also celebrate it by eating mooncakes. In Vietnam, the Mid-Autumn Festival is the happiest day for children, during which parents buy their children various kinds of lanterns and snacks. There are also various activities held to celebrate the Mid-Autumn Festival in Vietnam. The main activities include worshipping the God of Earth and carrying carp-shaped lanterns. Usually, a worshipping platform is set up in the yard during Mid-Autumn night, on which mooncakes, fruits and snacks are laid. Later, family members sit together and eat the food while appreciating the moon. It's also a tradition for the Vietnamese to light lanterns during the mid-autumn night. It is thought that if people walk at night with a carp lantern in hand, they will be safe from the carp spirit. Now, children hold various kinds of paper lanterns and play in the moonlight while eating mooncakes during the evening of mid-autumn day. Activity 3 Listen to the recording and correct the mistake in each of the following sentences. The first day of Tet is reserved for the nuclear family. Children receive red envelopes containing money for their elders. Usually, children wear their new clothes and give their elders the traditional Tet greetings before receiving money. Since the Vietnamese believe that the first visitor who a family receives in the year determines their fortune for the entire year. People never enter any house on the first day without being invited first. The action 
of being the first person to enter a house at Tet is one of the most important rituals during Tet. According to Vietnamese tradition, if good things come to a family on the first day of the Lunar New Year, the entire following year will also be full of blessings. Usually, a person of good temper, morality and success will be a lucky sign for the host family and be first invited into his house. However, just to be safe, the owner of the house will leave the house a few minutes before midnight and come back just as the clock strikes midnight to prevent anyone else from entering the house first who might potentially bring any unfortunate events in the new year to the household. Sweeping during Tet is taboo since it symbolizes sweeping the luck away. That is why they clean before the new year. It is also taboo for anyone who experienced a recent loss of a family member to visit anyone else during Tet. During subsequent days, people visit relatives and friends. Traditionally, but not strictly, the second day of Tet is usually reserved for friends, while the third day is for teachers who command respect in Vietnam. Local Buddhist temples are popular spots because people like to give donations and get their fortunes told during Tet. Activity 4. Listen to the recording and number the conversation. Hi Hannah, this is John. What are you doing right now? I'm doing my homework. What are you doing? Nothing. It's a beautiful day. Let's do something fun. What do you want to do? Well, there's a food festival at Aeon Mall. People are selling food and souvenirs from all over the world. I like Aeon Mall, but I don't like food at festivals. They've got a lot of unhealthy food. So, do you want to go rollerblading? I can't. Jimmy has borrowed my rollerblades. Let's go to the art fair at Hua Guam Plaza. We can paint pottery there. Why do you want to paint pottery? We can make a birthday present for our friend Diana. It's her birthday next week and she loves pottery. It only costs 50,000 dong. I don't have enough money. What do you want to do? There's a really good film on TV. Let's watch it. You're no fun. I'm going to the art fair. Bye. Oh, wait for me. I'm going too. Unit 6. Activity 1. Listen to the recording and tick the correct pictures. 1. There was a fox on the prowl earlier. 2. We saw an eagle swoop from the sky to catch its prey. 3. In stories, the giants are often cruel and stupid. 4. My grandmother told me tales about brave knights. 5. There is a woodcutter in that village. Activity 2. Listen to the recording and fill in the blanks. A stack of gold for starfruit. There were two brothers living in this village. Their parents died, leaving them a fortune. But the elder brother was greedy. He claimed all the fortune and left the younger brother only a starfruit tree. Luckily, the tree gave him a lot of fruits. But when the fruits were ripe, a giant raven came and ate them every day. The younger brother begged to the raven, Please don't eat the fruits. If you eat them, my family will starve. So the raven responded, Don't worry. For each fruit I eat, I'll pay you with gold. One day, the raven took the man to a secret island, which was full of gold. He filled a small bag. Then the raven took him home, and he became well off. Seeing that, the elder brother wanted the gold too. 
He traded all of his fortune for the fruit tree. The raven also took the elder brother to the island. He brought a very big sack and filled it with gold. The raven got tired on his way back. It got angry and dropped the man into the sea. Activity 3. Listen to the recording and decide whether the sentences are true or false. Oral tradition or oral law is a form of human communication wherein knowledge, art, ideas and cultural material is received, preserved and transmitted orally from one generation to another. The transmission is through speech or song and may include folk tales, ballads, chants, prose or verses. In this way, it is possible for a society to transmit oral history, oral literature, oral law and other knowledge across generations without a writing system or in parallel to a writing system. Religions such as Buddhism, Hinduism, Catholicism and Jainism, for example, have used an oral tradition in parallel to a writing system to transmit their canonical scriptures, rituals, hymns and mythologies from one generation to the next. Oral tradition is information, memories and knowledge held in common by a group of people over many generations. It is not the same as testimony or oral history. In a general sense, oral tradition refers to the recall and transmission of specific preserved textual and cultural knowledge through vocal utterance. As an academic discipline, it refers both to a set of objects of study and the method by which they are studied. Activity 4 the story has been all jumbled up. Can you listen and put the scenes from this famous fairy tale in the right order? The Boy Who Cried Wolf Once upon a time, in a beautiful village near lush rolling hills, there was a boy who watched over the village's sheep. Being alone up on the hill was very boring. To liven up his day, the boy thought it would be fun to scare the villagers and scream, Wolf! Wolf! The villagers grabbed whatever they could and ran up the hill to scare off the wolf. When they reached the top, they realized they had been tricked by the mischievous boy. He laughed and laughed until the villagers angrily walked back down the hill. Even the sheep were not amused. The boy continued to call Wolf, and the villagers warned him that the next time they will no longer believe him. The boy shrugged off the warning and lay down for a nap. One lazy afternoon, the boy heard a terrible sound. Before he could even prepare himself, a wolf appeared right before him and was chasing all the villagers' sheep. The boy screamed, Wolf! Wolf! But having lied so many times, the people of the village just ignored him. With no one to help him fend off the wolf, the sheep all ran away and the boy was left crying on the hill. <laughs>